This is Profiler Milagros Kendall, agent number 2543, reporting in for case number 329. First sighting of the subject was at a rodeo. An old pocket watch was involved. We've pulled up an archival log from the last time an entity like this was sighted, which was in 1984 with um, agent Polina Zoloto, a private investigator. We are, of course, using Dorm's special technology to communicate with agents in the past. We also have a special uh, expert monster hunter who is a monster enchantress from the Central Jersey Division of Dorm. Her name is Agent Melina Williams, and she is also on the case. I used to ride horses. Not many people know this about me because I don't like horse images anywhere in my home. They just have some bad energy, but I used to ride them. So when we got the assignment that there was some sort of disturbance at the rodeo, I knew I was going to feel at home we went to Henry Ranch Park, and it was Agent Barkus, myself, Agent Williams, and Agent Lee were also there. And as soon as we got to the Henry Ranch Park, I not only felt the terrible energy that horses give off, but I also felt something on top of that. At first I thought, oh, horses have gotten worse. Ugh, wild animals. but. Then I realized that it was a, a spiritual energy that was much deeper than the negativity that horses bring to this world. Um, I have some follow-up questions mm. about the negative energy or negativity you get from horses. Yes. It, was there a specific time in your life or, or something that happened when you were riding horses <laughs> that made you feel that they give negative, negative energy to you? Of course, every single time I move towards a horse. Well, you see, from growing up with horses, I understand how they communicate. And one way in which they communicate is through the rings on their nostrils and their ears. Mm -hmm. And every time I move towards a horse, its ears go back. They lay their ears back close to their head. That's a sign of anger. And their nostrils flare. That's a sign of frightening, they're, they're afraid or they're angry and they're feeling emotions. And then they kind of cock their legs, their back legs, they'll cock a back leg, pick it off the ground ever so slightly, ready to punch out. Ooh, terrible creatures, if you ask me. They really look to, if you were able to speak with a horse, which I got to a point where um, I had a few children in my boarding school that I have, that have the ability to communicate with animals and uh, catty creatures they are. They, nothing good to say about anyone, nothing good to say about each other. They're gossips, honestly, horses are, complete gossips. And I felt that sort of, you know, when you're in a, a click or something and, and, and then you feel the energy of the click and you just feel from the inside, you feel like a bad person. That's how horses make people feel, well, at least me. They make me feel like a bad person. <laughs> and I know I'm not. So I know that the problem is with the horses. And honestly, taking care of horses is mostly taking care of horse poop. Does that make sense? Yes, sure. Uh, so you're saying that horses hate you. 
I think they hate people, <laughs> Milagros. I think it's not just me. It's people that horses hate. Horses I mean, do that around all people, though. Well, you know, I can put on a smiley face if I don't like someone, but I want them to think that I like them. Horses know how to play games. They're two-faced little bastards, they are. But aside from the terrible energy of the horses there at the rodeo, there was that other energy. And as I was moving into it at the Henry Ranch Park, I could smell... It was sulfuric, like rotten eggs. And usually when you move into a horse area, what you smell is manure, hay, grain, and sometimes carrots. If you have that sense that can smell carrots deeply, it's a gene, some people have it, some people don't. I don't have it, but a lot of people do. But I smelled sulfur with this one. And I honestly wanted to stop outside the front entrance to the rodeo. I wanted to stop right there and not take another step, but oh, Agent Jenny, the sweet dear she is. She put her hand on my shoulder and she said, you don't have to go in. And you know what I knew what she was saying is I'll take care of you if you do go in. And so I took her hand and I put my hand on her hand on my shoulder. And I said, I got your back. I'll go in. Agent Barkas, you seem very protective of mayhem. I'm having some sound trouble with you. I, Kendall, I don't have a whole lot of time. I have hacked the feed at dorm. Only you can hear me. Right now, if anybody from upper management hears this, I'm just fucking cussing about Millie a lot and how I don't trust her. I figured that's the most they could believe. I need to know if you are okay. I know they did something to you, and I know that something happened to you. Are you okay? I'm fine. I don't know what you're talking about. Kendall, you look like you've been through hell. I have been through hell. Kendall, I, I think I can get us out of here. I don't want to leave dorm. Dorm is my home. Dorm is no. my future. I'm Kendall. on the fast track to upper management. Kendall, you know that's... I have been in and out of 17 dorm facilities in my life. I have been on purpose. And I finally found out why. I finally found one that has my file. They know everything about me and everything that's happened to me. And the fire wasn't my fault. And they know it. They've known it the whole time. I'm on the fast track to upper management. No, Kendall. Kendall, I can help you. I'm on the fast track. <sighs> no, Kendall, look. Okay, listen. I don't have a lot of time, so if they ask you what I said to you during this interview, tell them that I, I didn't want to let Millie go into the building because I knew there was something demonic in there. There was a sulfur smell, and I don't trust Millie. There's something wrong with her. She is a threat, and I didn't want to let her near the demon because... The last time I was on a mission that Millie was involved in, she was responsible for it. And I need to, I, I can't let her near it. It knew that I was there. It was attracted to me. Not like in a sexual way. I'm not, I'm not like bragging about myself. Like it, it sensed something in me and I finally know why. I finally know what is different about me. I know who my mother was and why Dorm has been hunting me all this time and why they want to use me as an asset. And I can use that against them, and I can get you out of here with me. I spent five years of my upper management training reading about the beacon. That's so you. You are. You already knew. Did they? Did they tell you it was me? So you've been letting me sit here since you got back. We need you. There's ways to use people without locking them up and telling them that they have to work for you. 17 years of my life, I could have known this information and maybe I would have worked willingly. Kendall, maybe I would have worked. I trusted you. I would have worked for you. You still can. I don't like what they're doing to you. Don't worry about me. I'm, um, I'm on the fast track to upper management. 
Kendall, I have to help you. I have to find out what's happening. Look, this thing, I could hear its hooves. I could hear it scraping around. It, the horses were scared of it, and the horses were scared of Millie. There was something going on there. I know it. I know there's a connection between Millie and the demon in the barn and the horses and whatever's happening with Dorm and trying to keep me captive. Thank you, Agent Marcus. I'll, I'll come back to you. Agent Melina Williams, I know you're a monster enchantress. Are you also an animal enchantress? Well, part of the secret of why how I enchant the monsters is that I'm connected to a source. A source? A source. And that source allows me to feel. And that source tells me things, it shows me things, and that's how I'm able to get the monsters to come. So this source that I felt, there were two presences on that on that rodeo that day. There was a light, airy presence. It, it came in the shape of a woman. She had blonde hair. I couldn't see her face, but it was just, that was the distinguishing factor was the blonde hair. The other entity was heavy. I smelled the sulfur, but it was heavy. And so what what usually happens when you have heavy, you have to make sure they you trap them in a certain area. So I have my salts where I sprinkle in a circle to protect all of our agents. And it also kept the entity in one spot. Now, I wasn't quite sure what to do with the entity after I had captured it. Um, but I just, I just sat there and waited for something to shift inside of me. And that is when a horse rode by crazy and, and knocked Agent Millie to the ground. Um, I'm not quite sure what to make of that, uh, but it definitely was a sign that horses do not like her. I don't know why, usually horses have light, airy spirits. It's usually love from horses. That's what I feel from horses. I'm not sure what she did in this life or a past one, but whatever it was, it's terrible. Okay. So let me clarify. So you're saying that horses hate Agent Willie Mayhem. That's what I deducted. There were about 15 horses that I saw her walk by that flared their nostrils. Do you feel like that sulfur, that heavy presence was within Millie Mayhem or cloaking her in some way? And that's what the horses were responding to? If it was inside of her, then it's a hopper. A hopper? Because a hopper, yeah, like it'll hop from body to body. Oh. Because when I did the salt, she was protected. So there is a possibility that she had, the, the entity had inhabited her body. That is, that is a possibility. But it was um, maybe hopping from person to person, horse to horse even, potentially. Potentially. In addition to all the guests, I, there was no way to know exactly where it was moving. Mm hmm. Okay. Thank you, Agent Williams. I will. Um, we'll talk more about this later. Agent Lee. Oh my God, Kendall, you look like fire. So cute. I mean, the eye makeup is so trendy. Like, I wish I could get my eyes to look just like that. It's. I'm not, I'm not wearing any eye makeup. You're a natural bitch? Oh my god. I am jelly, let me say. You look so good. I just... <sighs> By the way, have you... I don't know if you tried this, but um, Mayhem gave me this. It's fermented mare's milk. She said it's a little bit alcoholic. I don't know where she got it from, but... Probably a mare. Oh, 
you think she fermented it herself? Like, oh, wow. She is talented. Because let me say, I don't know what it is about her. But when we were at the rodeo, I was like trying not to step in any horse poop. But I watched a horse sense her. And like, it's a little bit scary. <laughs> Just thinking about it. But that horse's mane and tail turned bright white. And then it just sort of dropped dead. <sighs> huh. When it sensed mayhem? Um, I, th I think so. I, <laughs> I, I don't know what happened. I sort of saw this and then <laughs> Um, I think I got really scared, and I sort of ran around the track a little bit. Uh, I didn't know what was happening. I ran, and I saw Melina throw some salt, and then I felt really soothed afterwards, but I don't, I don't know. Like, I felt Mayhem was chasing after me maybe a little bit, but then she, when she ran through that sprinkle of salt, it felt like her face changed know um and then she was like same old mayhem again like so sweet <laughs> saw that my socks had gotten wet because a horse pissed on me and offered me a new fresh pair and that was so nice of her but yeah it was um it was pretty scary so what i'm hearing is that agent mayhem changed in a appearance or you said the look on her face was very different and she chased you yeah and almost like it was like a tick tick face change and it's like <laughs> she was so nice and i looked at her and it looked like she was scowling at me but then a second later she was back to normal again i i don't i don't know what happened there Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Agent Lee. Mm -hmm. So it seems like we have some type of um, body hopper on our hands. I'm not sure which specific one, but seems to have gotten Millie. And it seemed like it also frightened a horse so much that it fell dead and its tail turned white. I'm actually going to move over to the archival report. Agent Polina Zoloto, a private investigator from 1984. Agent Zoloto, am I coming through? I don't know. Can you hear me? Hold on. Yes. Let me check this. I'm just getting used to using VHS. Technology has gone so crazy in our 80s. It's all over the place. Yes, it's the end of the future. I apologize in advance. My English not so good. Wait, no, I do not. Today is March 21st, 1984. I am Agent Paulina Zoloto, Agent 1164. I'm still 25 years old and I still look better than I did last year. First name means Paulina which means humble, which I am not. My last name means Zoloto, which is gold, which is what I expect to be paid for my services, not cash money, not you write me a check, do not Western Union wire me money. I want bars of gold. Just want to get that out of the way first. I don't want to talk too much because I have a hot day tonight. That's why I'm dressed up, you know. So we'll make this fast. A little bit about me. When I was a very young girl, I used to see, sense things that nobody else would see or sense. And I would get up and tell my mother in the morning and she would say, oh, Paulina, you had too much pampushki for dinner last night and you had bad nightmare. Well, I grow up, I become amazing private investigator working for NCB and Interpol in, Ki in Kiev. Yes, I did. Here's where story gets really weird. Are you listening, Milagro Scandal? Yes, I am listening, Agent Poloto. Zoloto. I like your eye makeup. You'll have to fill me in later. 
everyone says that I'm, I'm not wearing eye makeup. I just didn't see the sun for 30 years. Very interesting technique to avoid skin cancer, I guess. I understand. All right, listen. Very weird case. We were called to public space park area. A man was found, how do you say, broken paper by tear, uh, paper shredded. Man was found shredded, but naked in public park area. I go to the morgue. I put my hands on his body like I do. You know what I saw? Do you want to know what I saw? Yes, I- I saw absolutely nothing. Nothing came to me. I say, oh, sorry, sometimes nothing happens. I go home that night, and in the middle of my sleep, I felt the pressure on my chest. A weird, disgusting smell. And I looked over thinking maybe my dog was in bed with me, but no, he wasn't. So I, was, I did not know what that smell was terrible, like rotten eggs. And I opened my eyes. And do you want to know what I saw? Yes. Absolutely nothing. However, I did see large pair of eyes. When I called the lead investigator on the case that I had just been to with the naked man in the park, I asked for more details on him. They said he was naked. Someone heard a man yelling, mayhem, it's all mayhem, running around the park, naked that night. I don't know why nobody called the cops. And when they found him, he had been choked to death by an old stopwatch, clock watch. That said, like shoved down his throat. And that was all they found. So I will you... tell you this. Let me tell you one more thing. Yes. That being that came to me that night with the large eyes, I felt pressure on my chest. Even though I felt its presence, it has no soul. It knows no time. It knows no space. Protection is an illusion. Oh, I should order pizza. What do you think? I think you definitely should order pizza. Yes, I agree. Pepperoni would be my suggestion. Thank you, Agent Zoloto. If anything else comes to me, feel free to reach out. No, don't. Yes, do. I'm delight. I will, maybe? Uh... Malina, there have been some reports that came out. And oh, the uh, UFO reports? The UFO reports. In that document, it reveals my birth parents. I have been a foster kid. I accepted being a foster kid. I accepted being passed around from house to house to house. And it had the names of my parents. They worked for dorm. Did you, did you know that your parents worked for dorm before this report came out? I didn't think I had parents. I knew nothing of them. I was dropped on the steps of a Popeyes, and that's all I knew. Huh. How are you taking this information? The UFO stuff, I, I knew deep in my heart I could feel it, that they were real. I could feel that we were living amongst them. But my parents? working for the company that I work for and still not, not saying anything? That must be heartbreaking. Yeah. But the UFOs, I don't know. I don't know. It's a lot to take in, Agent Williams. 
there's a lot of um, truths out there that should never have seen the light of day. I'm going to have to talk to Agent J. Pistole about this because he's in charge of security, document security specifically. I just know that dorm has been housing UFOs for about 35 years from the report. I thought we dealt with monsters, not UFOs. Well, um, I believe Dorm is a versatile agency. Yes, we deal with monsters and demons and spirits and the occult, but we also can pivot to deal with UFOs. And I believe that is what that report um, was reflecting. But the report that you saw that had the secret about your parents, you should never should have seen that. And I'm sorry that you had to find out that way about your parents. That was the uncontrollable forces of the occult report that was not supposed to be released. I mean, the desire to want to slay monsters was because of the anger of not knowing, of not being listened to. And, and, and then now I know, I don't know if I'll be able to fight. Well, I think you should take some time and um, consider that for yourself. Marcus, you look different. I am different. You look different too. I am different. Did you like my present? I did. I have more files here. It's really easy to sneak into security here. I've been casing the system the whole time I've been here. I actually have a watch that I use and I set it and just tick, tick, tick. I have down to the second how long it takes Agent Pistol to wander off to get a snack or a drink of water. Just long enough to grab a file or two to release out because dorm can, needs to stop hiding people's information from them. People have a right to know what has happened to their loved ones and their family. People are being manipulated into a dangerous profession that people are being captured and locked away in time distorted training programs instead of people being honest with them. We can do good work here, but we're doing it in an evil way and I'm going to stop it. I think you can help me with that, Kendall, and I know there's still a chance that someone in you, somewhere deep inside, wants to help me with that mission. I know that this is not what you signed up for when you became a profiler at Dorm, okay? I may be, I may be a Nephilim, whatever, whatever term you want to use for it, but I have, it's my humanity that makes me a good monster hunter, and I know that you have humanity too. I do. Agent Marcus, I don't want you to think that I'm against your mission, but I want to know if you see any potential to make this work. I will tell you this. There are members of the dorm upper management that are deeply evil. I spent 30 years underground training for the upper management program and I saw them and I worked with them and spoke to them. This agency is meant to root out evil and demons and monsters and there are some at the top. They're trying to eliminate their competition so they can shore up their power. But there are those who are fighting against it. There are people in dorm agencies across the world who are fighting against it. I don't even know if Millie is purely evil or if she's raising an army for her own reasons. I don't know. I know that people like 
my mother, outside consultants are trying to root out the corruption here. I think that I can do more good from inside of dorm than outside of it, but I'm tired of being a prisoner. I need you. Can you sign off on letting me go to full uncustodial operations? Can you make me a full agent and get me out of this prison? I've done all that I can from inside these walls. Once I get my promotion, you can have whatever position you like. I need assurances from you that there's going to be a way for me to make sure you haven't flipped on me completely. Okay, I'll tell you this. I haven't told anyone this. The reason I joined Dorm is because a changeling took my child and killed my husband. And that changeling is one of our junior agents. And when I found that out, I went to kill him, but Dorm stopped me. And that's why I was in the upper management program. It wasn't a punishment. It wasn't even a reward. It was, it was bribery. So I wouldn't kill one of the junior agents who killed my child. I've never told anyone that. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry that happened to you. And I'm sorry they did that to you. I'm sorry that they're using your pain to control you. I know what that's like. I want to take down the evil members of upper management right there with you. As soon as I get promoted, full agent, Profiler, anything you want. I just want freedom to move how I need to, to help you. And I'll find that changeling for you and I'll make sure he gets taken care of. Then we have a deal. We do. Uh, Just off the record for one moment. Um, send message to Agent Arsenio Roy 2K. Um, the mayor's milk recipe is you must take the milk from the mayor and then blood from the sixth baby that the mayor has in its sixth year. And you need six ounces of that blood. And there's an incantation. I'll send it to you now. And that incantation must be done on the 6th of June at 6 p.m. That will be the mayor's milk. In order to reverse the effects of mayor's milk, you need to do everything um, backwards. That entire process, just do it backwards. You have to put the blood back in the horse and the milk back in the horse. Um, No, you can't just feed the horse the milk or blood. You have to put it back in the bloodstream, the same vessel that you took it out of, and the same teat that you milked it out of. All right. <clears throat> Where were we? Oh, we were talking about um, this uh, heavy presence, the sulfur uh, in That's the right. ranch. Mm. Uh, what happened next? I heard that you chased Agent Lee. Do you have a, rem- a memory of that happening? Mm. Of me chasing Agent Lee? Yes. <laughs> That's so silly. That's what she said, isn't it? You know, you can't always trust what young agents say, especially Agent Lee. She's 21 years old. Did you know that? I could smell the liquor on her breath. I gave her a little milk to settle her tummy. Her tummy dum. Yes? Mare's milk? Oh, just milk. (laughs) You know, do you know what mare's milk does? No. There's a special recipe, of course, um, in order to make it. But it takes the, some people call it victim, I think that's silly. It takes the drinker, we'll say, and it opens them to be a vessel, a channel for other things to come into their body, so to speak. And and, and controversial, yes, maybe a little bit, but it is an excellent way of detecting if there is a presence that wants to um, possess, for lack of a better term, 
some sort of person in the field. And always, whenever there's a presence, they can feel us coming, especially when you have Barkas with you. <laughs> She's like a big red flag. It's fantastic, though. It's really quite helpful. And I needed to make Agent Lee a little bit more helpful as well. So we gave her a little bit of mayor's milk on the, in the field. And, and yes, a little regular milk later to settle her tum-tum. But she was running from you because she said that you seemed to have some some something changed in you. Did you well, drink the mayor's milk too? No, no, I didn't. I didn't drink anything. <laughs> Mayhem. Mayhem. What is it, Milagros? Did you drink the mayor's milk? Let me ask you what you've been doing for the past week, Milagros. You know, we can both ask questions. It's my job to ask the questions. Well, it's my job to tell you what happened in the field. So did you drink the mayor's milk? In I have been drinking mayor's milk for ages, Milagros. Ages. So you did? Yes. And it's perfectly fine in me. There's a presence. The hopper. Oh, God. I've heard. <laughs> if mare's milk makes you more susceptible to being a vessel, yes, then it sounds like you were possessed by the hopper in that moment, and maybe even Bill. I'm not possessed by anything, Malagros. Do you have an urge to shred things, like shred people? <laughs> do I have an urge to do what? Shred. Like, shred. I've never had an urge to shred things in my life. I am perfectly under control. I'm perfectly under control. <laughs> this has been one of the most upsetting events of my entire life. And my life has been rather long, Milagros. I have never worked with such incompetence, so many people wanting to go, oh, I want to be human. I want to stay human. I'm upset now. What do I do? <laughs> Excuse me. We'll be needing several batches, Arsenio Roy 2K. If you could send to my boarding house several batches of the mayor's milk, that would be lovely. We're a little bit behind. I know you were asking for the recipe. I communicate with one of my agents on this. Yes, I, I noticed. We're gonna just keep you quarantined in your report log room and have that mare's milk delivered to you as soon as it- Quarantine, okay. excuse me? <laughs> Yes, uh, quarantine. Um, I don't need to be quarantined. Agent Lee. What? Agent Lee, I, I need you to stop drinking that mare's milk immediately. Okay, okay you, what? Just, you just finished drinking it. Well, apparently the mare's milk makes you more susceptible to becoming a vessel for other spirits. And that's what happened to mayhem. That... Oh my god, that makes so much sense. No, it totally makes it sense. It happened to you. I just want to warn you. Oh, it totally happened to me. It did. I was, yeah. Like, I had ran through the salt and Mayhem was coming after me. And then, like, you know, she was kind of, like, uh, nice. And then her face went crazy and then nice again. And then she, like, threw this, like, water bottle at me. And it's a kind of a sports bottle, which I'm not very familiar with, where you have to, like, pull it with your teeth and, like, squirt it into your mouth, almost like it's from a teat. And she just kind of, like, uncorked it and then, like, and like squirted a stream right into my mouth because I was like, ah, and it went right in. And then that's when this like spirit went inside of me and I, I couldn't see it, but I felt I was blonde. And I was like, this must be so cute. So I took some pictures to see it and just, <laughs> Kendall, what is it Lee? What's this that I see on my phone? This report that went, this report that went out. Oh, oh yes, uh, yeah, no. there are a lot of things in there that people shouldn't see. <laughs> you know where my baby is? Uh, 
Uh, Dorm well, knows where my baby is? Well, there's a reason why um, your baby was... No, I did. <laughs> no, you... I know... I know he disappeared into the sea, but... It's yeah. because he belonged there. He needed to be there. He was the heir of the undersea throne. And he, he needed to be with his people. I'm so sorry you had to find out this way. Would you like to visit him sometime? He's, he's very, I've, I met him during my training. He's very benevolent king, young king. Very wise. You, you met him, Kendall? Yes. Yeah. Dorm told me they don't know anything about what happened to him after he disappeared in that wave. The more I find out about the secrets that Dorm has kept from all of us, the angrier I become. Excuse me. Um, excuse me. If you don't mind, I'll continue this later. Yes, of course. Agent Polina. Are you there? I'm the, I'm here. Okay. Are we in secure connection right now? Yes, we are. There's no one listening to what I'm saying. Just me. Because I'm I already feel like my life is in danger. I don't want to make it worse or make it worse for you because I don't I I don't know. I don't know. I try to pretend I do, but I don't know everything. I wanted to tell you something I don't like to share with nobody. So you need to keep this to yourself as a fellow agent. Uh, so the reason why I live here in US in Philadelphia, small town crappy, instead of back home where I would be a very successful private investigator. Three days after my experience with uh, investigation, finding men in park, you know, I always, my whole life, I call my mother and I tell her, you know, I had this vision of sleep and she says, as usual, oh, Paulina, you must have had too much borscht fritter with garlic before bed, you have bad nightmare. I said, okay. Two days later, my parents disappear. Gone. No trace of them, no way, no, nobody, nowhere, nothing. And that was a long time ago. And to this day, I don't know where my parents are. Um, it's a weird thing, something that came to mind. I ordered my pizza, it was very good. But you know, I order pizza, I don't, I don't put cheese on my pizza, you know which most people find very weird. Sometimes I don't put sauce or dough either, but this time I just didn't put any, no cheese. I don't like dairy. I don't like milk stuff. My mother used to tell me a story about, uh, so this, uh, and I think it scarred me as a little girl. This milk uh, story, she said, there is a certain type of milk that people could develop to make them conduit for spirits and things. And she believed it. I always thought it was quite crazy. But when I was a little girl hearing those stories, I used to wonder about that milk or milk or where it came from. And from that day, I just never. I'm just having feelings right now because I know there are secrets within dorm. I know there are things that I don't know. And not knowing what happened to my parents and where they are, and knowing that somebody out there does know 
is a little bit too much for me to swallow. So if you know anything or hear anything, please let me know because I plan to use my connections here and with Dorm to find out not just what the hell visited me that night after case number 677 in Kiev, but also what happened to my parents. Because somebody out here knows. Agent, Agent Zoloto, I have a question. You, you mentioned before that you feel like you're in danger. I do. There is something hunting me. I am hunting someone always, but there is someone hunting me. I know that I can't, I will not be able to get away from this presence. And I don't know why. I just have to hope I find it before it finds me. Hmm. Thank you, Agent Zolz. I'll, I'll come back to you with more questions, I'm sure. That is no problem. Vargas? Is this line still secure? Yes. This, um, the release of that report with all the secrets, just it's having this ripple effect throughout all of the agents. It's just showing me all the harm that Dorm has been doing. No. We really need to make this place better from the inside. I agree. I actually, I found out from my report that some of my friends from high school that I thought died in that fire are still alive and they're still out there. And I've been mourning them since school ended and they're still alive. And it was my fault, but not in the way that I thought it was. I erupted and I didn't know that was something I could do until then. And it burned the school down, but that's because I didn't know my powers then that I know now. It's like a radiant energy. It's like a sacred flame type. But that's not important. Look, what's important is right now. See, the thing about hoppers is that they're not naturally malevolent. They're demonic, but they're a lesser demon. They they feed off mischief. They feed off a little bit of mayhem, but they also, they're, they're from a time before, before cities, before urban areas. They don't know what to do with cities. It's too many people. It's too much. That's why they seek out parks. They go to parks and they, they hop from people to people and they feed off them, but it's like, it's like a mosquito bite. It's not a death. It's not a murder unless they feel completely threatened. And then they can, they can lash out, they can slash people up, they can do damage. And the thing is, uh, talking to people in the area and just interviewing people, I don't think this hopper was new to the Henry Ranch Park. I think it's been there for a long time and it's been thriving and it's been fine. I don't think it was a problem until we got there. And I know that Millie is why we were there. I think Millie wanted this hopper for her collection. And I think that she brought us there to claim it. And she put all of us in danger to do that. Interesting. I'm gonna go to, I'll be, I'll be back with you, Marcus. You do what you gotta do. Um, this is really quite unnecessary. Did the mayor's milk arrive? As did a change of clothing. You know, I hate blue. I hate this color. It's awful. It probably appears black on camera, but it's blue, navy. I said you should go into the field, Kendall. You should listen to me. What does that have to do with anything? <sighs> As a profiler, you just pry into every little piece. <sighs> I'll be honest, you're too good of a profiler, Kendall. 
Milagros. Because I figured out what your plan is. Your job is to profile. It's not to pick dorm apart. How long have you been working with upper management, Millie? Quite a long time. Ever since... Well, I started working here for six years and my sixth year and they decided to pull me out. My mother worked for upper management. I know. And her mother before her. Do you wish that you were also on the fast track like me? <laughs> I should have been on the fast track a long time ago. How do you like the fast track? Do you like spending 30 years in the space of a week? To be honest, I... I didn't quite enjoy it, but I understand that that type of training can only happen over the course of 30 years. I can tell you got much better. I still think you should be in the field, though. It was a hopper, by the way. Sorry, I keep cutting you off. No. Um, yes, it's, it's a demonic hopper, specifically. Yes. Um, well, Mayhem. Yes. Knowing now that you were um, planted by upper management to collect certain types of spirits, this hopper... It, it, once we um, get it out of you, which that's what that blue cloak is for, it's to mm -hmm. um, absorb the hopper out of your body. Yes, I know. Once we get it out of you, you'll be back to normal. Do you know what normal is for me? Actually, no, I don't. <clears throat> what is normal for you? I'm a teacher. I'm a sweet teacher who likes red apples. Red is the worst apple. It's mushy and has barely any taste at all. But I love them because I'm cliche because I'm a teacher. I don't want to be who I normally am. I thought you liked working with children. I like working with monsters. I like, I like being who I am. I really do like Jen Barkis. I really do. I really do like Dr. Diamond, mostly because she's a werewolf, but I like kind of, I tolerate the human. As flippity jittery as she is. And I do hate Winona. Agent Jane Lee has so much potential which is why she needs to drink the mayor's milk. And Melina, ah, oh, what a wonderful transfer to our department. I hope she sticks around. She has the ability to sense things that I never could touch. My mother had that ability. She has the same ability as my mother. Be careful, Kendall. She will be right behind you on the fast track. Right behind you. There was one woman that slipped from my grasp, though. <laughs> oh, if she was quick, too quick, too quick. It was 1985 when we finally ran into each other. But she had been tipped off <laughs> by someone. Someone tipped her off and said, be careful for mayhem. <sighs> I don't know who it was, but as soon as I find that person, Thank you, Mayhem. I'll, I'll leave you to it with um, mm. exercising that demon hopper from your body. Mm. <laughs> Agent Lee. What was in here? What have you been putting inside of me? What have you been doing with my life and my family? You know, Kendall, I'm done. I'm done with you, and I'm done with Dorm, and I'm not going to be a part of this anymore. Do you understand me? 
I am done! Agent Williams. Okay, I need everybody to um, channel their energies because we have to get this out of Agent Millie. Uh, if it's not out within about six hours, it will take hold. Okay. Um, Sabase, Sabadu, Sabase, Sududu. Do I repeat after you? Yes, we, we must chant. Okay. Sabase, Sabadu, Sabasui, Sui, Sabayu, Sabayu, Sabase, Sabasu, Sabasu, Sabayu. I think it's working. Is there anyone around Agent Millie? No, she is quarantined in her room. Okay. Now, for her to not get repossessed, she must stop the milk madness. That must stop. You must bathe in salts of pure pig feces. Okay? Okay. Nobody wants to touch pig feces. No. Thank you for that, for that warning. Agent Williams, good work. Agent Zoloto. Sir. Seven, say, do, se, seven. Agent Zalota, I need you to listen to care to me very carefully. <laughs> I need you to find salts and pig feces and bathe in them immediately. What are you talking about? Trust me. Just don't question it. Just do it. I need you to help me find an administrator. I need you to help me find a darn administrator to talk to somebody. I'm in danger. I will find your feces. I will find your salts. But my life, I can feel it coming from me. I am not safe. I need your help. I need someone's help. I feel it. I will, um, I'll try to get someone to help you. Administrator? Yes. No, no, no. That wasn't the command. We clearly discussed this. You were to go in, leave no trace, eliminate anyone who witnessed the attack. That's right, in the shadows. Thank you, goodbye. Administrator Howard. Profiler Kendall. I'm sorry to bother you, but the, there are several issues that need your attention. Number mm -hmm. one, our agent from 1984 feels that their life is in danger. And number two, this report that was, uh, that was released leaked. Uh, it's wreaking havoc among my agents. Milagros, forgive me, this is going to be a little expository, which I know is beneath you. Every time we issue you a, a dorm registered laptop, you sign a piece of paper that you probably don't read very carefully. And on that piece of paper, uh, the tiny print tells you that we monitor the activities that occur on your computer because you see Milagros, it is not yours, it is mine. It is ours. We have been watching you. And I'm afraid to say, I am disappointed 
you have lost control of your team. We trusted you. And you have turned against us. Now you know you have little choice here, little choice in this matter. You are nothing without Dorm. And I need you to right this wrong. Milagros, a beacon is only useful when you control the light. Eliminate the beacon. Number 2543. <sighs> Reporting on a lot. Um, this is the case of the demonic hopper. It is a spirit that, um, well, it does two, uh, two behaviors mainly. It inhabits bodies, especially those that are more susceptible to being inhabited, such as by mare's milk. It inhabits those bodies and um, temporarily takes control of the person. And then for certain people, it also attacks, shreds, and leaves them in a public area. Um, it was seen in the Henry Ranch Park, and it inhabited the body of Miss May uh, Agent Miss Millie Mayhem, who was sent by dorm upper management to collect the spirit. Uh, it, I believe it may be sentient, and I believe it was captured and um, deposited into the dorm files. And now I see, I'm watching footage of it leaving Agent Millie Mayhem's body. That's disturbing. And um, I also want to report on some things that dorm upper management witnessed in my personal logs. You may think you can control me, but you don't know what's coming. I'd like to thank the following agents for their help with this case. Agent in Arsenal, Roy 2K, Agent Todd Howard, UK, and Agent J Pistol. Thank you for all of your anonymous and not anonymous tips in helping to crack this case. I also want to um, say that case number 329 was complicated and may have threatened the life of an agent from the past, Agent Zoloto but it also helped to unveil some truths that needed to be unearthed so that we can finally take down dorm upper management and replace you all with people who are worthy of your position. Agent Milagros Kendall, signing off. <laughs>